Welcome to Money Adventures with TK, a podcast for the ordinary young African who is determined to get their personal finances right. Willing to have a better relationship with your money? Well, this podcast is for you. Hello fellow Tourblazers, welcome back to Escapes with TK slash Money Adventures at TK, the podcast. So I have one of my absolute favorites on the hot seat today. <laughs> and before I get into who the guest is, I'm sure the cameraman is already shining the spotlight on her. <laughs> I really find a lot of inspiration from this particular guest because she is unapologetic about how she lives her life. That's Whether good. it's a professional, <laughs> personal life, she is the girl with the hashtag Girls of Fortune is. And if you don't like the movement, that's on you. Oh <laughs> I have the privilege of speaking to Lavato. She'll introduce herself. But what I love about Lavato is Lavato is, like I mentioned, unforgivable. Unforgivable, unapologetic. You know, she lives her life fully. She has her career path entangled <laughs> but most importantly she walks the talk you know she is about excellence she's about branding she's about positioning and being strategically so so i had the privilege of speaking to her just after a strategic meeting and my goodness it was <laughs> amazing. It welcome was to amazing. well welcome back because i featured you in yeah. episode three of talks of a linford yeah i get it Welcome to Thank you. Money Adventures TK Escapes with TK. Welcome to TK's Safe Haven, shooting live from Lapel Essentials mm. Health and Wellness Spa, situated in Lower Tizani. And Lerato and Hape have the privilege of oh, enjoying <laughs> a massage from this amazing space. So, anyway, without wasting any more time, let's. How are you today? Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you're one of the few people who is able to introduce me in a way that I could never on my own. Um, very few people can do that. Very few people cannot shine me when introducing me. Well, I feel like <laughs> having shared a couple of spaces with you, uh, the most, the latest one being the TechCon. Yeah. 2020 yeah, and 2019. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, that's one of my favorite, like, oh, yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. Um, well, for those that don't know me, um, I am a Mosoto woman. Please don't ask me if I'm married. Like those questions are not really. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am head of strategy, strategic projects, and client experience at Metropolitan. I'm also the executive director of the Learning Mindset Foundation. I am I'm a student. I'm an author. I run a mentorship program. I consult uh, with SMEs. I sit on a couple of boards. Finally, um, in the country, and I'm branching out actually uh, out in October. Country. I guess I'm I'm hitting the diaspora really hard. Yeah. <laughs> So that's me. Those that don't know. <laughs> My goodness. Okay, I don't know if you guys felt what I was feeling when she was going on and on. Like, firstly, where do you find the time to do all of these things? These only three, four hours. Yeah. Like, how yeah, do you? Where true. do you find the time? I find the time within the twenty-four hours. <laughs> you know, like I don't have extra time. Um, I work within the 24 hours that I have, and that normally means waking up at three, sometimes four if I'm lazy, um, and I plan my day. That That's really what it's about, a disciplined approach to your day and what the impact you're going to make in that day should look like. Um, and then, of course, I close it off with reflection. Did I do what I said I was going to do in that day? So that that's what kicks me up. That's what kicks me in the butt. My goodness. Yeah. So for me, the Leraton Parker brand yes. position is so well. Thank you. you know, <laughs> so, so well. Maybe take us through on the journey on where it started and what the brand stands for and yeah. what the brand seeks to achieve. 
Yeah. So, I mean, there are a couple of aspects to the brand. Um, the first one is, you know, this is a knowledge-based um, person, um, mm -hmm. entity, persona. Um, and I'm never shy about sharing knowledge. I think I've always preached the idea of democratization of knowledge. So anything about my brand will either empower you, um, will connect you with resources that can empower you, will challenge you to think differently about yourself, your life, your own goals. Um, but there's also um, an aesthetic um, that, you know, this brand is about. Yeah. Um, my brand manager loves to say it's quiet lux. You know, I love, I love luxury. I love, I love, <laughs> you, know, you know, luxury. I love, I love looking beautiful and, and, and treating myself to nice things and driving cars that I think are beautiful. And um, so the, the brand is also about that. Um, and so you'll see a lot of my fashion moments. I love, I love stuff like that. Um, and finally, it's about... It's an experimental brand as well, okay. which is beautiful because you never really know what we're going to do next. <laughs> you know, I love that about the brand. It's also incredibly experimental. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you'll see as, you know, the months go on that we're really pushing the envelope in terms of what a young Muslim woman can do. What a young Muslim woman can do. And talking about a young Muslim woman, like you have a very colorful academic journey. Yeah. I mean, you started in <laughs> IT yeah. and now you are doing client experience. Yeah. So maybe take, talk us through the academic journey and why it's so important to invest in yourself and yeah. your development as a human being. Well, I mean, there are two basic things. Um, we develop ourselves because we want to be better versions of ourselves. I think, you know, at a basic level, that's what self-development is seeking to do. You want to be a different type of TK, you know, in a month's time because that's what keeps your life incredibly interesting, at least for me. The second thing is, you know, in our economy, development is tied to money as well. I, I'm not shy about my ambition to earn as much money as I possibly can because I have infinite uses of money. Mm -hmm. So I need it. I need lots of it um, in order to achieve the stuff that I want to achieve. So my, my self-development was closely tied to my career because I needed to make sure that when I go to school and I invest 250000 um, in an MBA, it's because that MBA is going to come back and actually pay me or pay itself and then pay me back double, um, maybe in the next six, seven years. Um, and also the other you know, courses that I do, the, the executive development courses, I do that because in my leadership role, um, I mean, I'm, I'm one of the youngest exco members in this country. In my leadership role, what I want to be able to do is to make sure that I impart the company's message as seamlessly as possible. I'm not going to do that if I'm stuttering because I don't understand strategy. I'm not going to do that if I cannot translate strategy in English into a sort of, I mean, then I'm not a good leader. <laughs> so uh, all the things that I do with my professional career are tied to my, you know, student life because truly they, they you can't do one without the other. Like, I don't know how you can divorce the two. I really don't. Wow. So talking about, talking about that particular journey, uh, for me, what also stands out is your career. You've had a very colorful <laughs> career. I mean, yeah. banking, insurance, <laughs> telecommunications, yeah. you know. So how has your career been? I mean, I mean, imagine there's a viewer who's watching this particular episode, uh, episode or video or podcast or reading the article, if I convert this into an article, who's thinking, I need to navigate my career. Yeah. So maybe talk us through how you've been able to navigate your specific career. Yeah. So, you know, when I started, when I first started working in 2010, um, I think I was very fortunate to work in banking. Um, and then I used to work for Lesotho Post Bank when we still had passbooks. Ah. Yeah, that was before cards. Um, Have you seen And it was, I had a need to solve a general problem, which was one, I hate, you know, people lining up in banks and um, I think financial inclusion is, is, is a serious um, development need. And I think that's where a lot of my career journey or career goals stemmed from. There was a big picture that I was trying to solve for. And luckily for me, it was employer agnostic. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really care which employer was employing me at the time. I still am in pursuit of that goal. And I think that's why even in circling in telcos, 
I was never going to sell airtime, bro. <laughs> you know, I mean, when I when I got to to Vodacom, I immediately was fortunate enough to work on a business case that had something to do with insurance at the time. Mm -hmm. So it's always been big picture driven and very employer agnostic. And that's why tomorrow I can leave my current employer and go to another one. As long as the big picture is still intact for me. Wow. <laughs> so um, before we move on to that, before we move on to the next question. Mm -hmm. So you've been with a couple of employers. Yes. Have you been, very personal question, have yeah. you been preserving your retirement benefits? Or what is that look like? <laughs> Obviously, I you know, <laughs> but you know I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, so, a, I'm a big advocate for retirement planning. Yeah. So I'm going to be brutally honest, not all the time. Okay. Um, there was a particular move where I withdrew um, from my retirement funds, but it was because I wanted to start something. Okay. Um, and I'm monitoring that entity very closely because it definitely has to pay me back. It's unfortunate it'll never pay me in compound interest, <laughs> but it has to pay back the initial investment that I took out. Um, I'm not a stickler for, you know, take everything out and leave nothing. Um, I'm also not, uh, you know, I'm not a strong advocate for leave nothing to chance. I think sometimes we do get lucky, um, but you have to play your cards right. You, you kind of have to know what you're going to do with a chunk of money. Uh, don't take it out just for the sake. I could have and bought a Louis Vuitton. I didn't. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> talking about a Louis Vuitton, we'll come back to that. So for me, 2019, 2020 and 2021 have been big years for the Leverton Parker brand. Yep. You know, yep. you've done exceptionally well. What does... What can we expect from that larger market <laughs> brand? <laughs> and what have been what have been some of the driving forces to get to get the brand to where it is today? Um, maybe let me start with the second question first. My big idea with the Lahad Rampaka brand is to be an export. Mm -hmm. um, I think companies like Dustbusters um, have shown us that you can start local and actually grow into the diaspora. Dustbusters is now Dustbusters Africa. Um, but I haven't really seen a Mosoto deliberately say their brand is an export. And that's what I'm passionate about exploring. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I say I'm branching out into that into the diaspora it's because you know my book for example I want to increase distribution channels beyond this country um, and while it'll be digital the you know the PR aspect of it I'm actually outsourcing to the diaspora because I, I, I do want to, to see myself somewhere in Nigeria um, or somewhere in Kenya um, because I mean TK how many conferences have I have I attended where I was equally um, you know compatible with the other people that were in those uh, conferences I was was a speaker in the um, ISAD conference and the East and Southern African Accountants General Conference. And, you know, people seem to like what I say. So I, I want to see whether or not I can't capitalize on that as a brand that actually was able to be an export. And I think adding on to that as well, I remember, I think you were speaking in Rwanda. I was supposed to go to where I was in Namibia then. Uh, yeah. Namibia. Yeah. But Rwanda was supposed to happen and then COVID. And then, and then COVID then happened, that. yeah. And for me, the one thing that stands out when I always think about that Le Ratum Park, uh, brand is start local and think global. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and when I see how the brand is evolving, it really captures and consolidates that narrative that think local. And, and for me personally, it's also challenging me to say that how do I take the TK and Tebe brand beyond the borders of Lesotho? Yeah, yeah. You know? <clears throat> so when it comes to, now let's talk a bit about your book. <laughs> no, so uh, this is supposed to be a 20 minute episode, so I hope we still have a bit of time. Let's talk a bit about your book. <clears throat> and I was reading the book, so if you have not read that, Navigating Your Career, and I wish, this is a toolkit that I wish I read 10 years ago when I started my career. I'm sad. Sad. Note one, as per my notes, <laughs> I left my job without a solid offer to go to, but I really felt free. This remains the biggest lesson of my journey to self-awareness. Yes. So let's maybe talk about what self-awareness means for Leverton Park in the corporate space. <laughs> well, it's it's really a culmination of, you know, three aspects, and I talk about that quite extensively in the book. Um, you know, self-regulation, self-motivation, um, and also a sense, a deep sense of self. Mm -hmm. 
and that often means connecting with your emotions and I know a lot of us when we get into corporate we, we actually think EI is some uh, academic concept that is only practiced by leaders but if you're serious about leading yourself you can't disconnect yourself from your emotions um, and the reason why I left that job was because I was miserable I was I was miserable, um, you know, up from tears in the morning, not connected in the office. I'd sit in a little desk and I wasn't adding any value to that employer. So for me, it was important to preserve not only the employer's time because they were really, I felt, spending money on someone who was less than. Um, but it was important for me and my corporate legacy that I don't I don't kind of regress into the shadows of a has been. I never want to be a has been. In in, in my career I will always be it um, and for that to happen I have to connect to that job I have to connect to the culture I have to connect to the strategic vision I have to connect to the leadership if, if any one of those things is missing for me then I regress I become miserable like literally miserable and so I left because I needed to preserve myself I was losing myself <laughs> so for a viewer that is possibly starting the career yeah. as a young person what do you say to them from uh, from your book's perspective yeah. because I feel like I've read the book and yes 10 years later I'm like oh I've done a couple of career decisions career moves yeah but had I had this guide when I was starting out I would have made completely different yeah career decisions yeah so what do we say to those people you you start with leading yourself that is that is perhaps the starting point of any professional career that you will embark on leading yourself and leading yourself is about self-awareness about self-regulation and about motivating yourself and inspiring yourself to become the thing that you see in your head about yourself and that's why i say if you're very clear if you've led yourself why tie yourself to an employer leading yourself is employer agnostic you don't know who you're going to work for anyway so leading yourself is about understanding who you are what principles guide you what are your values and then making sure that every career decision you make ties you to that job otherwise you, you you've stopped leading yourself and the minute you stop leading yourself tk that's when you become a husband bruh <laughs> Ooh, I trying to be a husband. So, <laughs> in wrapping up, I mean, on a lighter note, let's talk a bit about, like, in closing, let's talk a bit about your wardrobe, what inspired you. Who's Lerato on the personal side? Lerato is the career woman, the brand, the hard yes. working person. So, who's who's Lerato on the lighter side? From I love clothes. What inspires your clothes? <laughs> and she spends a lot of money <laughs> on her clothes, bags, and shoes. I actually asked if she's insured her stuff. But anyway, what inspires you? Um, it's it's lux. It's um, I don't consider myself a fashion head. Um, I don't necessarily follow trends. I love looking at trends and, and how people put things together. Um, but I always come back to basics. I'm I'm a solid colors girl. Um, you know I love well fitting clothes. I love high waisted pants. You'll always see that a little bit in in all of my looks. And I I love fabulously made shoes. Um, and I don't care if they're expensive. I love fabulously made shoes and I love equally um, amazing bags. I think they're a statement. I think anywhere I go, people look at my feet and then they go upward um, <laughs> and then they linger on my face a little bit. Um, so I always try to make meeting me holistically an experience, a beautiful mm. experience. And it has to be tied into the visual appeal as well. Um, visual like appeal. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See why I love having love. <laughs> so in closing, like absolute closing, yeah. like uh, what are your closing remarks to the viewer and listener? Who's, yeah. Um, buy my book. <laughs> Two reasons for that. Um, we need to start learning how to reflect on who we are in the spaces that we spend the most time, eight hours a day, and we also need to understand where the world of work is going. So if you're curious about that and you want to find your place or at least start thinking about your place, buy my book. Secondly, follow me everywhere because I look great almost all the time. Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. But um, I love interacting with people. So yeah. any anyone that kind of communicates on me with me on social media, I'm always I'm always so open to chat and um, even if it's one AM, always open to chat. 
So thank you so much for the love and support. I've been chatting to the ever so beautiful and fabulous Leratum Paka. Make sure to follow her on all the social media platforms, Leratum Paka, and buy her book. I'm loving the book. Buy my book. <laughs> buy her book. And of course, remember to subscribe to my channel, uh, Escapes with TK, and of course, the podcast, Money Adventures with TK. And until the next video slash podcast, love, peace, more champagne, mm. more bags, <laughs> more shoes, <laughs> while taking care of your money. Mm. Thank you, guys. Mwah. Cheers. You've been listening to Money Adventures with TK. We want to hear from you. Don't be shy to like, comment, and share. Money's an adventure. Let's enjoy the ride.